Shout out to Astarte Jones for sending me the story. And we are back in L.A. talking about the ancient corrupt organization that is known as the Los Angeles Police Department. I mean, between them and the NYPD, maybe the Baltimore PD and to an extent, the Chicago PD and a few others. They just collectively love to come together and just be ain't shit at all. Now, the last time I talked about the LAPD was involving that one cop who decided to take it upon himself to fondle a dead woman. And I think that was back in December when I talked about it. Well, this time we are back in LAPD again in L.A. And we're talking about something that many cops around this establishment have been known to do. But for some reason, the LAPD loves to continue to do it to no end. So according to this article coming from the Los Angeles Times, it says officers falsely portrayed people as gang members and falsified records. Are any of us surprised by that? I thought so. More than a dozen Los Angeles police officers with the elite Metro division are being investigated on suspicion of falsifying information they gathered during stops and wrongly portraying people as gang members or associates. The officers assigned to special patrols in South Los Angeles are suspected of falsifying field interview cards during stops and inputting incorrect information about those questions in an effort to boost stop statistics. Now, this all goes back to those quotas we keep talking about. As we all know, when it comes to like the beginning of the month or the end of the month, you'll find that there's more cops out on the road than usual. It's not really so much in the middle weeks of the month, the middle days. And they're trying to reach a quota. Don't let any of these blue lies matter folks tell you that there is no quota. There are quotas. There are quotas. There are quotas. Point blank period. In at least one case, body camera and car recordings did not match the accounts in the field interview cards. Some of the officers have been removed from active duty. Notice they say some. I got a question. How much is some? Like what's a number? Chief Michelle Moore on Monday reached out to some civic leaders in South L.A. to explain the investigation. An officer integrity must be absolute. There is no place in the department for any individual who would purposely falsify information on a department report. The LAP issued a lengthy statement on Monday explaining that the investigation began after a San Fernando Valley mother received a written correspondence from the department in early 2019 informing her that her son had been identified as a gang member. She believed her son was misidentified and reported the mistake to a supervisor at a nearby police station. According to the LAPD, the supervisor immediately reviewed these circumstances, including body worn video and other information, finding inaccuracies in the documentation completed by an officer. The parent was notified that her son would not be identified as a gang member and any references to him as such were removed. The LAPD then launched an internal investigation into the actions of three involved officers. Over the course of several months, internal affairs investigators have continued their investigation, resulting in identifying additional inaccuracies in the documentation on field interview cards completed by those officers as well as others. All of the officers involved were assigned to Metropolitan Division crime suppression duties at the time the inaccurate documentation was completed. Given the serious nature of the alleged misconduct, all involved officers have been assigned to inactive duty or removed from the field. The Los Angeles Police Protective League, the union that represents officers, said in a statement that it was aware of reports of discrepancies contained on a limited number of interview cards that the department was looking into. It also expressed confidence that Moore will oversee a thorough and fair process to determine the facts and to also ensure that any impacted officer is accorded to his or her due process rights. A time investigation published last January showed that Metro officers stopped African-American drivers at a rate more than five times their share of the city's population. (laughs) That definitely surprises no one. To combat a surge in violent crime, the LAPD doubled the size of its Metropolitan Division in 2015, creating special units to swarm crime hotspots. Nearly half the drivers stopped by Metro are black, which has helped drive up the share of African-Americans stopped by the LAPD overall from 21% to 28% since the Metro expansion in a city that is 9% black. Now, look at that. Did y'all hear that? They said that up to 28% of black people were pulled over by the police, the LAPD. 
in a city that is only 9% black. What does that sound like? Doesn't that sound like when they come up with that statistics where they say black people are 13% of the population but commit 50% of the crime? And then they threw in that 92% where they said that we create, that we uh do 92% or was it 90% of the in to racial crime where it's crime against another group of people which is a very very could not be more false statistic but look at what is going on here how is it that only nine percent of people who live in that city are the ones getting pulled over the most it's no way that there are that many reckless black drivers out in la and then what they'll do is they'll stack it up against people who have a higher population and say it's not that many. Well, they're telling on themselves. They that lets you know who they're targeting. They are targeting black people. But again, like I say, this is of no surprise to anyone. In response, the LAPD announced last fall it would drastically cut back on pulling over random vehicles at the time. Moore said the Metro vehicles stops had not proved effective, netting about one arrest for every 100 car stops, while coming at tremendous cost to innocent drivers who felt they were being racially profiled. Officials said Metro crime suppression officers who number about 200 would instead track down suspects wanted in violent offenses and use strategies other than vehicle stops to address it flare-ups and crimes such as burglaries and shootings you would think those are the ones that the crimes they would actually go after but the fact that they have a very high pullover rate and most of them just happen to be black in a city where their population is very low nine percent is low less than ten percent which means on the low and that's they are probably like the true minority of that area and in most of la or most of from what i'm hearing in california in certain places is uh is overran by mexicans so that means they are literally uh picking who they want to go after and it's people who look like you and i and then they throw on or say that they were a part of a gang and everything like that which throws on another stereotype that only black people can be in gangs especially if you are a black male you saw her what they said in this story where they said one lady's son was pulled over and they tried to say that he was gang affiliated and it was like, no, he is not affiliated to any gangs. Do you know how dangerous that could be? If you try to say that he's affiliated or anybody's affiliated with a gang and they're not, you could put their life in danger. And then you got to ask them what gang are they a, a part of and watch them start stumbling or the worst, they could come up with something And then what if it got back to that actual gang? Then that person's life is in jeopardy. I keep telling you, the real thugs are the ones who wear that uniform and that badge and carry them cuffs and that gun and that taser that they don't like to use so much, especially when it comes to us. But like I said, it's the Los Angeles Police Department. They've been corrupt since forever, for as long as I can possibly humanly remember. But I'm going to end the video on that note. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe. Also, make sure that you are following me on Twitter and have the notifications pressed on because when I upload a video, I'm sharing it there first. And I will talk to you in the next one.